Hey you guys, it's your girl Desiree here on Hey Desi and I am back with another YouTube video just as I promised. Now like I said in my previous video, Hey Desi as a channel is new to YouTube but me, Desiree, I'm not. I have been here before, I have been on other people's channels before, I have done work with YouTubers before. But I am so galvanized to start my own channel and be consistent with it because I have an idea for this channel. I want Hey Desi to be something I'm passionate about, which is lifestyle, looks, and laughs. And by that I mean laughs would be like story time because I have been through some crazy stuff. Looks because I feel like I'm really interested in plus size fashion. I'm plus size. I want people who look like me to find inspiration just like I find inspiration from people who look like me. It's a community and of course lifestyle like going through personal struggles hair makeup skincare rants whatever lifestyle anything that's kind of relevant to my lifestyle will interest me and hopefully will interest you as well so thank you for checking out my content i know i'm brand new i know youtube is kind of a saturated market but i promise i got your back now this video is going to be a story time but before i get into it make sure you are subscribed make sure you are Make sure you've hit the notification bell. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up at the end if you liked it or give me a thumbs down. I don't be hating on people who give me a thumbs down because that means you didn't like it, you know? Comment, engage, and let's get this thing popping. Now this video is going to be all about the time that Andre 3000 curved me. Yes, you heard that right. Andre 3000, he curved me, y'all. He curved me. Now this was in 2008. I'm 25, about to be 26 in July, so it was around this time, so I was about 15, about to be 16, if that makes sense. I was about to be 16, sophomore year of high school just wrapped up, it's the summertime, and I'm about to be 16, it should be an amazing time, it should be a wild and out time, all of the crazy things should be happening. But that was not the reality for me. Like, I lived a very sheltered lifestyle. My mom was not having that. I was not one of them teenagers that could just go out to the mall and chill with her friends till night or go out, sneak out. Like, I wasn't that person. It was not like that in my house. Like, it was either you go to church, you go to play in sports, because I was playing sports, or some extracurriculars, volunteer maybe with your school, and that's about it, girl. So everything was kind of done in my neighborhood. Now, we used to hang out like other neighborhood kids would, that were like me, but we would all hang out and play. But at this age, 15, 16, people have boyfriends, girlfriends. They're dating, they're working, they're driving. We're not doing that. Nobody's really outside playing anymore, to be honest. Like maybe we would meet up at the pool and my mom wasn't even having that, to be honest. She wasn't even letting me go out to the pool with the people in my neighborhood. So it was pretty sheltered. So my idea of fun would be basically when I come home from school, high school ends at 2, I'm home by 3 latest. I, my idea of fun is to call my friends that I saw all day at school anyway, I don't know. We would be on the phone all day until our parents came home. Or I would get on Tumblr, Tumblr was my obsession this time at this time period or YouTube. I had a little YouTube channel talking about my boys and braces and stupid stuff. <laughs> Or I would play The Sims or watch TV. Honestly, that, that was it. Like to give you just an idea of what Desiree's life was in 2008. It was just anything based on the computer or TV, to be honest, in my house. Because that's all I could do. Now, there was one setting my mom felt comfortable with and I had just mentioned it. Church. Like we went to church for a Bible study. On, I think Bible studies was on Tuesday or Wednesday. Tuesday. And then, of course, Sunday church. So I was always there. And the church we went to at this time was kind of like a mega church. I don't really want to say the name, not because it's a big deal, but I don't really want to say the name. Um, it was a mega church, and it exposed me to people I didn't go to school with. So that was kind of cool because I get to see people outside of my school. So, I mean, and that was cool. And I would go to the youth ministries, which was in another building across the street. So that was kind of like a little escape like you know you you know socialization time now this is summertime and the church they want to keep us with them you know the church they they don't want us to do things that you know we're not supposed to be doing like teenagers do so they're trying to keep the teens of the church active so they would have all types of activities now before i even get to that point this church was 
like I said, a mega church. The first time me and my mom went to this church, I was kind of nervous because I, I mean, it's even the youth ministry is big, bigger than what I'm used to. But the first familiar face I saw was someone I knew when I was in sixth grade, when I was 11, at another school I used to go to. So it was just like, oh, hey, you know, like, like, oh my God, somebody I know. And I think she felt the same way. Now we're going to call her Leslie. Leslie was going, this is her church. She had been going to this church basically all her life. I was brand new. Now me and Leslie were not the best of friends in sixth grade. That was why it was so funny that we just kind of connected when I saw her at the church that first time because I honestly thought she was kind of mean to me in sixth grade. I thought she was kind of a bully to me but like today we talk about it and she thinks that I was a bully to her so I don't know but I, I mean y'all take my word for it or y'all take Leslie's word for it. Leslie was not the nicest person in sixth grade to me but it wasn't that serious we got over it. I mean at this point I'm 15 years old like it's cool so that was my ace like we hung out any anytime I went to church on Tuesdays it's not really Sunday Sundays you're with your family and we're all in the main building but at least on Tuesdays at the youth services oh me and Leslie we were like this now Leslie has a younger sister who's like four years younger than we were and she had an older sister who was two years older than we were. So we'll call Leslie's younger sister Kelsey. And we'll call her older sister Chelsea. Now I gave them these names specifically. Leslie's my friend. Kelsey is the little sister. And Chelsea is the oldest sister. I gave these names specifically for a reason. Because their real names kind of flow like that. Leslie, Kelsey, Chelsea. And their real names sound like they flow. Okay. So fast forward, so you already know that me, Leslie, and her two sisters, who I'm now friends with by association, Kelsey and Chelsea, we're just like, the four of us are like buddies. Now, of course, we meet other friends in the church and we have our own little posse going on. But if you saw Leslie, you saw Desiree. And if you saw Desiree, you saw Leslie. Now, I would hang a lot with Chelsea too, the older sister. We were really close too. Okay, so this is, oh wait, school just finished, it's May. And... Oh my god, my nose is running because I have the fan on. So, Chelsea was just graduating high school. Remember I said we were just finishing our sophomore year, me and Leslie, but her older sister is two years older. So, Chelsea just graduated high school and she was headed off to college in the fall. So, she was really feeling herself. Now, she, Kelsey and Leslie, they are Africans. They're Nigerians just like I am. So, they come from a very similar sheltered lifestyle as well. So that was another reason why we're so tight at church. So, okay, this summer, Chelsea just graduated and she's feeling herself and she has her own little, she got her a little job at the gas station and she had a little bit of money. She didn't have a car yet, but she was really feeling herself. So we kind of looked up to her because she was like our big sister. Even though she was Leslie and Kelsey's big sister, she was like my big sister too because I'm an only child. Okay, so now you got some background to know why I'm, and this is important for what I'm about to say. So the church took a step further outside of the youth ministry that we had Bible study at on the weekdays. They had small groups where you could connect further with people who lived in your area. So in my town that I lived in, the person, the delegate that they chose was a lady, we'll call her Miss Dana. Miss Dana, she was so sweet. She and her husband, they were so sweet. And they would host these small groups every Sunday, like around 7 p.m., 6 p.m., where we could all congregate in their house and just talk about the word and talk about God and just me. And why, of course, would we go to that? Remember, we're sheltered. Me, Leslie, Kelsey, Chelsea, we are sheltered. We don't get to go out. So anytime we can hang out with anybody, especially each other, we are jumping on that. So if we just learn about God and, you know, you know, while we can hang out, that works. So, of course, I was definitely at Miss Dana's small groups every single week. And they had their mom drop her off, them off at Miss Dana's small group. It was amazing. So Ms. Dana really took a liking to me, Leslie, and her sisters. Like, she really liked us, you know, and she would take us places. She would buy us Starbucks and just take us out to lunch. And she became, like, our aunt. Like, she was so cool. She's a Kenyan lady, and I connected with her on that because she's African. And it was just awesome, honestly. It was an awesome little thing, and it, it helped us stay out of trouble and gave us that means to socialize. So Ms. Dana 
said that she wanted to take Chelsea and all of us out to celebrate Chelsea's graduating like just kind of to congratulate her make her feel good and she would pay for it it would be a dinner where we could dress up and just she would drive us there and it would be in the city and it was you know it was cool of course my mom did not hesitate because it's church related she loves Miss Dana anything with the church kids all the church kids be doing worse than the kids in school but that's neither here nor there my mom was cool because she was like you know you're going with church kids great Leslie's mom was cool with them going because it's with us you know it's cool so Miss Dana took us to a restaurant I had never been to it is called Chow Baby now if you live in Atlanta I'm here in Atlanta if you live in Atlanta Chow Baby used to be on Howell Mill Road but I just googled it and apparently it's an Alpharetta now but back in the days it used to be on Howell Mill Road and it was it's an elite it's a, not elite but it definitely has an upscale clientele kind of it's like a stir fry, stir fry place where you can kind of put your ingredients and you know make magic happen it's a really cool place and it's not cheap and to take like six seven teenagers for someone you know that that was really sweet like god bless Miss Dana honestly so we are at child baby and we're feeling ourselves and we're all dressed up all nicely and you know doing us and Leslie like nudged me and she was like Des and I was like yes she was like look over there look over there at the bar so I'm like what I don't see anybody and she's like look 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 so I look and I couldn't really see so you know Chelsea was looking like you know what like he does look kind of familiar and Kelsey the youngest sister was like you know that that's Andre 3000 y'all that is him and so Chelsea she is a big Kid Cudi fan and an Outkast fan and I am too so we were just like oh my god like that is Andre 3000 you have got to talk to him you have got to talk to him so I was like okay you know like I was like can we all go together they were just like punking out on me they were not about it they were so shy so and remember this is 08 there is not smartphones like that I think there was the iPhone 1 but it was like on AT&T or something only and I have Verizon it wasn't a common phone basically everyone did not have smartphones the phone I had was the Razer and I had one of the best phones out in town so it wasn't a smartphone era Twitter was not around if it was it wasn't popular snapchat definitely was not around Instagram was not around honestly it was just tumblr myspace and Facebook honestly so and myspace might have been iffy at this time but definitely tumblr and facebook that's it like it wasn't even like social media crazy at this point so i said well i'm not gonna let this opportunity pass me by if you guys are too scared i will go by myself so i walked up to him you know dabbed the little sweat stash and just got myself together and i walked up to him and i was like andre andre and he's looking like and I'm like, Andre 3000, my name is Desiree. I am such a big fan of yours. Oh my God. And he was like, okay. And I was like, and at this point, I was kind of taken aback, not gonna lie. I was like, can I get a picture with you or an autograph or something? Now, remember, we're at a restaurant, kind of an upscale, somewhat upscale restaurant. And I never even understood the need of autographs unless it's an author like I have some favorite authors that I would love for them to sign the books but other than that like even if it's Beyonce what do I need and I love Beyonce what would I need an autograph for give me some merchandise and then sign it maybe but a piece of paper like I came with a napkin and I was like can you sign it or can you take a picture and I'm like waving my pink razor phone at this man and he was like nah nah and I was taken aback. Like, I could feel my heart just shattering in a million pieces. It's not like I was even an Andre 3000 stan. I'm a fan of his, still am. But I wasn't a stan. I wasn't like, oh my god, it's Andre. Get it together. I was just like, ooh, a celebrity. That kind of thing. And I think he noticed, like, that was kind of harsh. So he was like, I don't want to end up on no blogs, honestly. Sorry. And he just walks away. And I felt like my cheeks were burning red. Like, I felt like the whole restaurant was just staring at me. I could not believe that this man just turned me down. Like, he literally curbed me. Now, in the reality, probably no one was paying attention except maybe Leslie, Chelsea, and Kelsey. Them three. I don't even think Miss Dana was paying attention to this. Like, honestly, nobody probably cared. But I just felt like everybody was just staring at me like, aha, uh -huh. you know, like... I could not believe that this man said no. Now, 
I, I mean, thinking back on it, like as I'm even telling this story, if I was a celebrity, I, don't, I can understand why they don't always want to be on someone's phone. I do think that they should at least, you know, sign something or if you're in a restaurant, maybe not sign something. I think you should you shouldn't say no to your fans but I do understand when they don't want to to engage because maybe who knows what headspace he was in maybe he had a stressful day maybe someone in his family passed away that morning maybe he was just hungry and just wanted to eat because I didn't even see him with anybody and this is a whole like nice stir fry place I didn't see him with nobody he had his sunglasses and he was just there to eat like we were and honestly he has that right but I was definitely feeling the type of way like I was definitely looking at outcast sideways for like a year after that but I mean it, it wasn't that serious it's funny thinking back on it now but then I was just like oh you know down with outcast down with Andre but it's not that serious I don't think he would give anybody autograph I mean he just seems like he's in his own wave he's not on the same wavelength that the rest of us are on anyway he probably is not into that to be honest but that is the time i got curved by this man let me know in the comments if you've ever been turned down by a celebrity or by anybody else don't tell me about the time tyrone encourage you because girl girl but if you ever got turned down by a celebrity let me know who let us know who and let us know what happened share it share it in the comment section i would love to read about this i have another funny story it's not my story so i'm not going to tell it of a bigger celebrity that got turned somebody down i ain't gonna talk about it because it's, it's a gospel artist that turned a friend of mine down and she was kind of confused by that but like i said i don't think celebrities really have to always take pictures that could be annoying but i i mean you should kind of explain why at least say like you know what i'm just not feeling well i have a stuffy nose something just blatantly saying no it's still kind of rude to me but whatever if you like this video make sure to give it a thumbs up if you liked it give it a if you didn't like it give it a thumbs down hey it is what it is go ahead and subscribe and click the notification bell so you'll know what's up i'm coming to you guys with new content every single week this summer and moving forward i mean it is about to get crazy on this channel and you don't want to miss out thank you again for tuning in and have a good one bye